hip hip tally ho. Jules Guides here in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the videos because it does make a really big difference. Now today we're heading over to St John's Wood but as you can probably tell we're not in St John's Wood at the moment we're on Primrose Hill simply because it's got a beautiful backdrop but by lucky hap tis a stone's throw in that direction so let's go. I love October, brown leaves, Halloween, Michaelmas term, conkers, Harvest Festival. Simon, do you remember Harvest Festival? I do. Yeah. <laughs> we plough the fields and, and scatter oh. the good seed on. Scattering your good seed on the land, I so. Now look. I love these old, uh, this is a Penfold post box. Some of them are actually replicas. Sometimes they place replicas there. I don't know if this is an original one or not. I mean, originally they were green, obviously these ones. They were only produced from around 1866 to 1879. John Penfold was the name of the uh, designer. Sometimes you get that the, they have a little flap there. You get them in India, Australia. British Guyana. I think the Uruguayans bought a bunch of them as well. Most of these Penfold post boxes have Queen Victoria's uh, cipher on them, but uh, in New Zealand, I think there are some which have got King Edward VII cipher on them, which is quite unusual. So I'd love to see some of those. That'd be cool. Anyway, I like those. Stink pipe. Mother, she's an heiress, owns a block in St. John's Wood. I think Keith Richards lived in St. John's Wood, like Carlton Hills down there, when he wrote that line. And uh, he's probably referring to all these amazing mansion blocks that they've got around St. John's Wood. As you will probably notice, it is quite a well-to-do area. But uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have council housing as well. And these ones here, this is the Townsend Estate. What do you call it? Social housing? I don't know. They're not all social housing. I mean, some of them obviously sold off. And uh, when, when do you think that was built? Some time in the... I don't know, the uh, 60s, 50s? Uh, you reckon? Anyway, I mean, yeah, well, it must have been before the 60s because that says STMBC and S, that means St. Marilovone Borough Council. Okay. And that only existed until about 1965-ish. I think that's oh, when they merged them into probably became Westminster. And those, the blue lines, wavy lines, actually a reference to the River Tyburn that flows along here underneath the ground, goes all the way down um, out into the Thames. So you can see a bit of it running through the, uh, through the, over the bridge there, over the canal. The, the River Tyburn runs through a little kind of tube and over the, uh, the canal there, through a tube. You can see it in my Regent's Canal video. Yes, yeah, so that's St. Mary on top, as in St. Mary Le Bone, St. Mary Le Bone. Um, and it, it's, it means, St. Mary by the Burn, by the River Tyburn, you know, Mary, yes, so, which is why it's Marylebone, not, yes. Ma Mar not Marleybone, all right? Do you remember Banana Man? Uh, yes, I do, yes. <laughs> well, this is 29, Acacia Road, and this is Eric, a schoolboy who leads an amazing double life. For when Eric eats a banana, an amazing transformation occurs. <laughs> Eric is Banana Man. Oh. He used to sort of swim, didn't he? he, he it, when he flew, he swam through the air. Yes. <laughs> I never liked it. I was a more of a fan of uh, Super Ted myself. But... He was thrown away like a piece of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> this nice sign here. Now I see, I suppose the reason why this sign here is for horses here is because this is the barracks. There was barracks here since about 1800 or 1805 or so, up until about 2012 when they moved down to Woolwich. It's called Ordnance Hill because uh, the Board of Ordnance also used to be based here. They, they, they existed since Tudor times. They were responsible for uh, forts and land and barracks and anything connected with the defence of the realm. But this place has been sold now to some Malaysian billionaire. And I expect, by the looks of it, they're probably going to turn it into luxury flats. I mean, everything else around here is anyway. But, um, but just the opposite here, actually, 
before we get moved on. Everyone's got private security around here, so we better, we better do this quickly. You can see the houses around here are amazing. And this house used to belong to Edward Seif, vice president of the British Zionist Federation or something. Anyway, this house is where Carlos the Jackal, his name was. He was one of the most famous terrorists in history. He started his career, his terrorist career here. He, he called on the front door. Edward Seif's like butler opened it and he went up into his bedroom upstairs and discharged a shot at Edward Seif. And apparently, I mean, he managed to survive the attack and then his, then his gun jammed and the boat uh, made good his escape. But then he went on to become one of the most wanted men um, around the world. And you know, in True Lies, the Bill Paxton character who's trying to chat up Jamie Lee Curtis, Arnie's wife, um, Arnie gets really annoyed with him and he accuses him of being Carlos the Jackal. And also in the Jason Bourne original book, Jason Bourne has to track down Carlos the Jackal. So he's a really famous guy. Anyway, started, his career started here. He's in prison now, they found him eventually. Crime doesn't pay, Simon. Oh, he's still alive. Yeah. It's such a beautiful area, this. You get these amazing buildings um, right up until you reach Finchley Road, which isn't actually that nice. Um, but um, this weird, funny building here actually used to be a tube station. Yes, Marlborough Road Underground Station. Because the tube was only uh, constructed in 1863, so five years later they extended this line from Baker Street and the intention was to take it up to Hampstead, but uh, I think it only they decided to abandon it at Swiss Cottage in the end. And you can still see the trains going past underneath if you look over that wall on the other side. Don't know what it is now. Some sort of place a, a Roald Dahl character would live in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks like it could be the BFG's house. Kind of suit you, actually, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just because I'm tall, it doesn't mean I should live in a tall house. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it looks like a bent fence, but it's supposed to look like that. It's intentional. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> walked up one end and walked down the other. <laughs> it's horrible. Why don't I just... It might look much better if it was just straight. It's interesting, these Abbey Road sides, actually, because, look, these are encased in kind of a frame. They're not usually like that, most street signs, but uh, they have so many people steal them. Oh, I see. Because of the yeah. Beatles and everything. Yeah. I covered Abbey Road in my Beatles video. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's let vintage jewels take care of this. What's so important about today? Today is the 50th anniversary of the iconic photo on the cover of Abbey Road. If you are a motorist and you're driving through London, don't come down this street like all these people who are clearly clueless. They obviously didn't realise. Here they go, yeah. Yeah, more patient people. Very patient, thank you. Oh dear. Oh my God. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. In the 1800s, this would have just been like a Georgian townhouse on a footpath on the way to Kilburn Abbey. There's so many famous people have recorded here. I mean, virtually everybody that you can name. Amy Winehouse, Pink Floyd recorded here. They did the Return of the Jedi soundtrack in there and Lord of the Rings. Now, this wall, by the way, if you're thinking of writing a name on it, it does actually get whitewashed every few months. But that ain't gonna stop me. Really moved it. it was like three meters down the road. Three meters? Oh, so, so part of it is still in the same place then? Oh, yeah, it started there and it ended right there. But in the photograph, that little manhole cover there, yeah. that's still there. There's a little manhole cover. You see oh, yeah, yeah. halfway across, that's there in the, in the photograph. Oh, look, these guys are perfect. Well, bravo! <laughs> bravo, perfect. Same no, thing. this is the original crossing. This is the original site. I know what they do, the locals say it's in a different spot. Just to, um, <laughs> as a joke. Just the, to wind people <laughs> up. That's right. Yeah. Not, I didn't think it was true. <laughs> the original sign was there, but it was stolen. Yeah, yeah. And people, on the back of the cover, there was another one, which is on that wall there. Was that was also it. taken. Was it you? You might as well no, come clean. There. Come clean, it was yeah, you, yeah, wasn't it's, it? Yeah, it's in my flat. <laughs> <laughs> the poor fellow who owned the Beetle, which is the, the Beetle Volkswagen in the background, he went away on holiday and people kept stealing his number plate. Well, that car now is in uh, the museum, the Volkswagen Museum in Germany. They restored it because the owner parked it there, left it and went away for a few days on holiday. And that added to some of those conspiracy theories 
about Paul McCartney being dead, as did the dress, how they were dressed. Why, why would that add to a conspiracy theory? What, what? Well, because you're meant to read it as Linda McCartney. Weeks. Oh, on the number plate? Yeah. Um, L, what was it? L LMW281F. Linda McCartney weeps. Paul would have been 28 if he'd lived. There's so much wrong with that theory, I don't even want to debate it. I'd like to talk about Yoko's good singing. Wasn't she a good singer? Yoko Ono. <laughs> You get a few of these around St John's Wood, these old uh, drinking fountains. Do you remember those from school? Yeah. I, I mean, we, we, we never let they oh still look. Oh, it still works. My lord, I have not seen one of those since school. That must be the Westminster. Is it Westmore? Because look, it says Custodi Civitatem Domine. Oh Lord, watch over this city or something. Oh well, who cares? Anyway, look, it's quite nice that they actually have a public toilet that works. So you see, that's the kind of stand you get in St John's Wood. If that was in, in my end, that toilet definitely wouldn't be working. <laughs> Fiat secundum verbum tuum. Let it be done according to thy word. <laughs> This is quite weird. Hello, sir. How are you doing? What's your shop called? St John's Wood Collectibles. Is that kit on the window out there? Oh, wait, OK. It's ice because I couldn't see it from over, over the road. road. Jeff, how long's, how long's this shop been here then? Well, it's been here for uh, well over 50 years, actually. And I've had it since then. So it's also famous because of Coldplay, because they wrote a song called Violet Hill. Oh, Chris right. Chris Martin wrote the song. People actually take pictures of the road sign. Oh, right. Like they do with Abbey Road. So, as a matter of fact, this is very special. Oh, this is a cloak as worn in the film Help. Is it really? Pure silk by Bill Gibbs. It was a collectible then. Wow. But as it happens, my wife was in the film. Yeah? Yeah, and she, they gave her this and she kept it. That's superb. That's lovely, We're not selling it. it. Yeah. She was in Hard Day's Night as well. Oh, but I love yeah. that film. She was in the original Casino. Oh, was she? Well, David Niven. She was, yeah, and Britt <laughs> Eklund. <laughs> she was Britt Eglin's body double in the oh, film. Wow. Oh, yeah. She knew them very well. If you're married She's to Britt Eglin's body double, yeah, you must be doing something right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> An American lady came in here and she was in a bit of a fluster and she was dusting herself down like this. <laughs> and she, I said, all right. She said, oh, my God, she said, I've, I've just been to the crossing. I had an urn with my Sydney. Oh, he was in the oh, urn and he oh, told me to throw his ashes on the crossing. So I took them up and I threw them all over the crossing and there was a big wind <laughs> and it's come all over me. And I, he's all over me now. So I can't get rid of it. That's <laughs> true, honestly. No, it's Thank you very much. See you soon. Cheers. Bye. -bye. Look here, Abercorn Close. Now, Abercorn was um, one of the governors of Harrow School. Harrow School owned a lot of the land around here um, but uh, it's funny yeah because Eton School owned a lot of the land just further over down towards Primrose Hill um, so I guess these posh public schools own lots of it, like the estate here so anyway Abercorn was one of the governors there but in Abercorn Close here number eight just down there if you can see it that was Boy George's first house that he bought after he had the hit with do you really want to hurt me as if you cared anyway <laughs> then, he, then he moved to Hampstead, that amazing house in Hampstead. Ooh. He's selling it now, yeah. Looks amazing. Here on Grove End Road is the Hospital of St John and Elizabeth. They've got a beautiful chapel inside here, which is used by the Knights Hospitaller. So they're like the, the modern version of the Knights of St. John, after whom St. John's Wood is, is named. But anyway, this chapel is so beautiful. The whole thing looks a bit nicer from the back, actually. But anyway, you should go and check out the, the, the chapel, which was actually originally in Great Ormond Street. They moved it brick by brick oh, to here. I don't know how they did that. They're always doing that in the old it's days, amazing. moving whole buildings. Yeah. But anyway, they moved the whole thing to here, and it's very beautiful. So I'm going to go and have a look.
lovely station, one of my favourite stations this actually. Very beautiful. And so what do you know about St John's Wood Station, Simon? Pointless fact, it is the only station on the whole of the London Underground which doesn't have any of the letters of the word mackerel in it. Did you know that? Okay. <laughs> I don't know who worked that out, but it is true. <laughs> it's called St John's Wood because this whole area used to be, I mean, many years ago, it was the great forest of Middlesex. Bits got chopped down and sort of sold off to various estates and eventually these forests got chopped down and divided up and this area around here got given to the Knights Templar who were this brotherhood who set up this group to protect pilgrims going to Jerusalem I think. Anyway, eventually they got too rich and the King of France and uh, the Pope got a bit annoyed about this so they decided to confiscate all their land and property so they comp which included this area around here and they gave it to these other less threatening knights called the Knights of St John and that's why this is called St John's Wood. Across the road from St John's Wood station is an air court and like Henry Eyre, he was some rich bloke who bought loads of the land around here as well. So this is a lovely old look, it must be 1930s or something, quite art deco. That lovely sign there. You get loads of these mansion blocks popping up around the beginning of the 20th century because a lot of these big rich families decided they didn't really want to live in those kind of grand houses with uh, servants anymore. Yeah, they, they, they wanted to have, they, they wanted something a little bit more contained and easy to manage. This is now called Tatham Place, but this whole area here, when I was a kid, I remember it being the Unigate Milk Dairy. Do you remember that, having a milkman, Simon? Yeah, I do. Sometimes they let you sit on the milk float and sort of drive along and... Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, the whole area was actually a big farm before that. I mean, I'm talking about the 80s when I remember it. Like, I mean, after the First World War, I was just reading, there was a butcher called Ken Brown who used to work down there. And he recalls it being like cows and stuff for grazing over on the fields because it wasn't quite as built up back in those days. But uh, anyway, look. A fire insurance plaque, cha -ching, <laughs> points to me, points, look. If you don't know what these stink pipes and fire insurance plaques are, then um, regular viewers will know, so I'm not going into detail, but I do have a video all about um, street furniture challenge in which I talk about all these fascinating things. Oh, look, now this one here called Drunch on the, on the corner of St. John's Wood Terrace and Schalbert Street, this used to be the Star Tavern. That's the pub where they filmed um, the video for Happy Hour, the House Martins. It's happy hour again, I think. Do you know that song? What? Maybe you're just not singing it right. How dare you? <laughs> I can't believe you. Anyway, it was quite popular. Paul McCartney used to drink in there. Dustin Hoffman, other famous people from the area. <laughs> Points to me, Metropolitan Drinking Fountain and Cattle Trough Association, 1861. I like these. Nice. Oh, only, uh, not very many points for this. I don't know. Hello. Hello, mate. <laughs> Does it work? Does it work? No, of course not. They never work. Annoying. Anyway, look, just next door to that is it our RAK Studios. Mickey Most decided to start a record company. He had hits with The Animals, I think he made them famous with um, House of the Rising Sun, Susie Quattro, Kim Wilde, We're the Kids in America. Why? <laughs> That's more my era. And opened these studios in 1976, and so many famous songs have been recorded here. Big Mouth Strikes Again by the Smiths. La 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 la, Big Mouth. Da, 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 da. Big Mouth Strikes Again. Fairy Tale of New York. They've got cars big as bars, they got rivers of gold. Adele's recorded here, David Bowie. Psychedelic Furs. Isn't she <laughs> really? pretty in pink? You know like, that song? I like, yeah, I, I, like that song. I, like, I like the film. To me, <laughs> oh, Vienna. Wasn't O Vienna, which was recorded in here, that was kept off number one. Oh, that's right. I think by Joe Dolce. Shut up your face, wasn't it? Ah, shut up your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. My yeah, favourite yeah, karaoke yeah, right. song. <laughs> and of course, Hot Chocolate, which is why they have the plaque for Errol Brown on the other side. Do you believe in miracles, Simon? Yeah. I believe in miracles. A 
Now that's a, that's quite a fancy corner shop. That's got to be one of the fanciest corner shops <laughs> I've ever seen. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's in a fancy area. You get your 20 B&H from there, son. <laughs> I'll have one panini and a cappuccino, please. What? Oh, we're 20 B&H. You know you're in, <laughs> you know you're in St. John's Wood. <laughs> of course, St. John's Wood High Street. So what, let's go this way. <laughs> More points to me, cabman shelter. A very nice yeah. cabman shelter, this one as well. Very well kept one. He keeps he keeps this one very well, but we're not allowed in because we're not cab drivers. But we can go there. Oh, I see. So you can, you can get yeah, we're allowed. We're allowed there. Hello. I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. Oh, the I was just being very complimentary about your shell. I was just saying that it's one of the the best kept ones. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's very beautiful. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks, man. I don't want to go on. I'm always talking about the same thing in every video. What I should be talking about is how you should be subscribing to my channel because it really makes a difference. It helps if you subscribe because it just makes me look good, all right? I won't email you or anything. Now, St. John's Wood Burial Ground. This is what's quite nice in here. And just buried on the other side here is a woman who was quite famous back in the... Uh, 19th, well, 18th century. Look, here she is, Joanna Southcott. She lies interred. That can't be very nice to be lying interred. 26 feet from this tablet. So that's actually her grave over there on the ground. And she described herself as being a religious prophetess. She had thousands of followers, actually, Joanna Southcott. She had, uh, and one of whom was, um, I think Lord Byron <laughs> was that, well, certainly an admirer of some sort. And Charles Dickens wrote about her in The Tale of Two Cities. Yeah. She described herself as uh, being one of the women of the apocalypse, as described in uh, the Book of Revelation. She was actually from Devon. And uh, when she first came to London, she uh, started selling seals of the Lord, which were parchments or something which guaranteed your eternal life. Uh, these predestined people. I think there was some, supposed to be something like 144,000 people who were predestined for eternal life. And when she was 64, she claimed to have become pregnant with the Messiah. It then turned out to be some sort of medical condition or something. <laughs> And when she died, she left behind this wooden casket with instructions. It was only to be opened in the time of extreme crisis and with 24 bishops of the Church of England present. Apparently, it contained all these prophecies and stuff. But then there's a society in Bedford called the Panacea Society who still claim to have the original one and they're still waiting to open it up. This whole area of St. John's Wood, since Regency times, it was very popular for keeping people's mistresses and kept women. If you're a wealthy gentleman and you bought a property in St. John's Wood, people would say to you, uh, oh really, and uh, who's the lady? <laughs> because it was quite famous for that. This is called Northgate, at the end of St. John's Wood High Street. It's another example of these big mansion blocks that started attracting people around the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, mostly because they had hydraulic lifts and things like that. So these wealthy people wanted to live here. There's actually, it's also where um, they used to film Callan. Do you remember Callan? Yeah, and, like, Edward with Edward Woodward. Woodward. Yeah, yeah. Edward Woodward, Callan, and that, that, that weird little character, Lonely. He was yeah. like a really sort of swelly old character. Oh, Mr. Callan, Mr. Callan. <laughs> church which is just behind that little garden it's, I mean this used to stand here in the middle of fields it's quite amazing you can see pictures of how it used to look in Regency times you know 200 years ago before it became all built up around here there's a breathless hush in the close tonight tend to make and a match to win a bumping pitch and a blinding light. An hour to play and the last man in. And it's not for the sake of a ribboned coat or the selfish hope of a season's fame, but his captain's hand on his shoulder smote. Play up, play up, and play the game. <laughs> uh, it was a very famous poem at the time. 
It was all about the war, I think. But yes, this is Lord's Cricket Ground. Originally, Lord's uh, started up in 1787 down in Dorset Square, which is much further down there. Then they moved it just to about 200 yards from here. So they've got a little plaque over there, just over the canal. They, they stayed there for about two years before they had to move it again because they built a canal through, and now it's here. And I can talk all about it in vintage and the jewels. People sing, sing like anything, any sort of song they choose. What could possibly be more English than a game of cricket? Jolly good in this splendid weather for it, don't you think? Lord's Cricket Ground here in St John's Wood is actually the home of cricket. Basically, the rules of cricket are simple, aren't they, lads? Oh, very easy. Very easy. Basically, very easy. There's, two, there's two teams. One's in and one's out. And then the team that's out has to get the team in, out. And then after you've got all the people in, out, then the team that was out has to go in and get the they're team they're that they're was out and now in, in out. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's simple, and then it lasts for, you do that for five days, and at the end, the Aussies win, basically. So Today, it's England versus Australia. Um, biggest rivalry in cricket. Some people say it's the biggest rivalry in sport, but OK, we're supposed to be talking about weather vanes. Uh, on top is a very famous weather vane made in 1926. He's called o Old Father Time, and, uh, and he's actually removing the bales from the top of the stumps. That comes from one of the laws saying that at the end of day, the bales must be removed from the field of play or something. Um, and anyway, he, I like old father time because he is the same height as me. He's six foot six. Why have you even bothered showing up? Well, I go to the cricket if there's no play. If you can't, can't see any action on the field, you may as well have a few off the field. So. Yeah. And, and the moustache, is that a... a, a Oh, it's real. Ob obligatory. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, uh, you know, like there's in many different cultures, uh, there's there's ways to, to come to adulthood and, and you know, like our, our Lord and Saviour, Merv Hughes, uh, a famous Australian cricketer, we all want to have moustaches. Anything to kill the... Oh, look, here's a beauty. Another one of those nice penfold boxes I was talking about at the beginning. And uh, here we're in the corner of Wellington Place and Cavendish Avenue. This is where Paul McCartney lives. But I spoke about that also in Vintage Jewels. Sorry. <laughs> Getting lazy. In 1966, Paul McCartney decided to move here to Cavendish Avenue. I think it's that one up there. Not bad for £40,000. I think that's how much it, he paid for it at the time, 1966. I think one of their songs, She Came In Through the Bathroom Window, was written after uh, an event which happened here when one of the fans got over and got into the house and she came in through the only Paul could make a song up out of something that happens like that. The story once where John was a bit pissed with him and he threw a brick, he, he jumped over that wall and threw a brick through the window, you know, because uh, Paul had annoyed him, as Paul tended to seem to do in those days. Uh, whether it's true or not, who knows? can't come across a cab driver without them going, oh, you never guess who I had in the back of my cab. If you beg me, I shall tell you. <laughs> uh, actually, pick Paul's children up. Used to pick them up at the end of the 1980s, and I've been a cab driver a couple of years, bringing them back here from Covent Garden, because they didn't used to order them in the name of McCartney. So I used to pick Stella up when she was a fashion student. The other one was Mary. I picked them up several times and never knew who they were. <laughs> Cheers, Eric. Cheers, Eric. Cheers, Eric, Eric Cheers. Uh, who Cheers, bought yeah. us both a pint in here. A very, very good man. Um, if you enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It really makes a big difference. It really helps. And uh, if you want to find out more about me, you can go over to my website, which is jewelsguides.com. See you next time, folks. Cheers. Cheers.